Color Luma is a beautiful toolkit. And the reason Color Luma is categorized the way it is is because Color Luma is really designed to give you kind of these light overlays and modifications and, and painterly overlays and things like that. It's these effects that you're probably going to want to have masked. You're, you're, you might apply them to the entire image, but a lot of times you're gonna wanna apply them to a specific area, a specific tone range in the image. So you go up to Tone Select and you select where you want those to apply and then you just pop down here to the Color Luma and you run one of these actions and it applies it. Now, understand the, the fluidness of Lumis because if you run an action and it's masked out and it's only applying to a certain area, you can always go back and change it. You can manually select that mask and paint things in or out to control it just like you can any mask or you can make another selection and then, and then remask that layer from, from the other tools. And so at any time you have the ability to continue feathering a mask, to, to remove that mask and put a new mask in based on your current selection. And we've tried to design Loomis so there's this fluidity uh, and non-complexity that allows you to pretty much always apply any tool without interfering with your workflow process. And you'll see that as you add these things, they just keep stacking. So the layers don't interfere with each other or with the total mask in Loomis. They just stack on top of each other. And there's kind of this self-awareness almost where you know you run an effect and it knows whether you've made a selection. And if you haven't, it applies it globally. You know, you refresh the total map and it puts it right up at the top so that you can see everything and, and refreshes everything. It's very intuitive. All right, we've talked about building the map. We've looked at this image and looked at how we can control uh, the tone values and, and so much information by using the simple toolbox uh, combined with the tone select. Let's go down now and let's start looking at the color lumas. Now of course all along the way uh, we can keep using tone select at any time with any of the actions. I mean that's the foundation here. We can apply any action globally or we can limit it with tone select or we can limit any layer we've applied or any action from another action collection we've applied with tone select as long as we have the total map built on the image which of course as you can see we do on this one. The Color Luma painters, Color Luma gets into areas of of detail and cast and just kind of those painting details that a lot of times you would have to do manually but we don't have to do as much manually now because we can we can bring in those limitations so I'm just gonna run a couple of them without right and you can see some of these different layers how they're doing some very special things by shifting color and adding kind of pixel painting overlays and stuff like that. There's actually a couple of new ones in version 1.2, like the sun paint, the sun gold. And these might look a bit intense applied globally, but let's say we were just applying that to this sky or somewhere else. There's a lot of, of power in there. Now you're also going to see some other stuff, a little bit of, of creative stuff like color mystic, uh, motion paint, and also some some versatile things uh, like like the new noise so soap action and darken edges and things like that. So the main thing to remember is we can run this globally, right? And some of them are intense and some of them are milder and we can do all kinds of cool things, but then we can limit those to the specific values in the image either before uh, we run them or after we run them. We can then apply those uh, using the mask layer to selection option of whatever selection that, that we've made. Okay, but in, in the last video, we did a lot of work on this image. We don't have to do the same one every time. Let's actually go over and switch to another image here and let's go down and, and play with color lumas in combination with all the things we've learned. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and run uh, the total map. We'll build the total map. And we have a neat image taken late at night, a lot of dynamic range going up near uh, Grand Tetons National Park. And so here is our, here's our image. We have great use of the tonal range and we don't really have much for clipping, right? We have a little bit down into the zone zero, the blacks, but just really little. If we look at that mask, right? Most of it is just down in uh, the zone zero, but not pure clipped. The same with these little bit of reds that we have right up here. We can see they're in zone 10, but only things that are that are notched into the white or into the into the pure black, respectively, are truly in like that final 10, 15% where it's truly, truly white and there's no other data. Now that's not to say we won't get rid of some of these clippings along the way, but let's hide the map and look at what we can do down here with uh, 
with the color lumos. First thing I'm going to do, the image has a, has a pretty good look, but it's, it needs some saturation. It needs a little work. I'm just going to click the magic saturate from the simple toolbox, right? We've covered the, the fundamentals of getting more advanced into the simple toolbox in the, the, the video that came right before this one. But we can see that I can just bring some saturation. Now, you'll notice I didn't do a selection. I just did a global selection. Remember that any of the actions that you're using in Loomis, they can be applied globally just like that. We don't have to limit them, all right? So we could limit it to a zone and a tone selection, but we don't need to. Now let's look at what's going on here. I'm actually gonna zoom in and let's do 100% on this. Okay, so we see that there's definitely some noise. This is a longer exposure taken in very low light, just as that sun's going down, which gave us a really neat look. However, there's a little bit of stuff going on. What I wanna do first is I'm gonna come down and let's go back, turn on that, that map, all right? So I'm gonna look at the map and let's take and look at this area along the green. We can see that the greens here, and the map needs refresh uh, because of that saturate, but uh, it's, it's still very close. We'll refresh it in just a moment. So I'm looking down here at zone one, two, and zero, right? And that pretty much represents this area, kind of this noisy area around the greens. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go and hide the map again. So I got 0, 2, and 1. Okay, I'm going to take those, and I'm going to do the feather 25 just to soften that up. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to clean up these trees a little bit. So I'm going to go to uh, the new uh, noise soap. This came out in, in 1.3. And what this will do is it's a fairly heavy noise reduction action. And, of course, you could run it globally. But what will happen is we can run this specifically to these zones that we've selected. So I'm wanting to bring the noise down in those dark areas without losing detail in the areas where I don't need that. And this makes short work of that. There's no need for me to do crazy masking or anything like that. Let's actually go in here and we can see that this actually did quite a bit to the noise without destroying my detail. So I'm going to turn this up just a little bit all the way. We're losing a little bit of detail, but it's not bad at all. And the beauty is it didn't affect us up here because we limited it to that selection, all right? So we cleaned that up a little bit, but now I'm gonna do something along those same lines in the greens. Again, I'm gonna take my zero, one, and two, and I'm gonna go ahead and feather those by 25, is close enough for here, uh, since I wanna kinda limit it to that area. And you can see it's nicely selecting around those areas, leaving the, the colors and the highlights alone. Okay, now I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna start using some of the Color Luma painters and in particular, let's go ahead and do, let's take the green paint overlay. And again, we've made the selection, just like we've talked about in some of the earlier videos. We have the total map. We can select any zone we want within the total map. And now when we run the action, it's going to automatically limit it to whatever that green highlighted area is. If we ran the action with no selection made, it would apply it to the whole image. Now let's see what's happening here. Look at what's going on here is we're, we're, we're putting this nice paint overlay. We're bringing some rich green into the trees that was kind of lost in the process of the long exposure, right? Kind of enriching those shadows, and maybe I don't want it quite that much. Let's dial this back to maybe 30%, okay? And we can see that we've enhanced those greens without negatively affecting any of the other areas in the image, which is really powerful. Now, if we go down here uh, where I did my noise soap, this was not selected, as, as we worked on that because I was targeting those greens, but there is quite a bit of noise back here. So what I can actually do is I can select the mask. Remember, everything is non-destructive. Everything's a mask. So at any time, we could delete a mask and restore the selection, or we could delete uh, that mask and then make a new selection and remask it, right? Because these groups of all the actions that we're running in Loomis, or even if we were adding these masks and these selections from Loomis to actions from another set, like Alchemist. You know, we could make the selection here, and, and then we could mask those out uh, down, down here. Mask the layer to whatever the selection we had. And we could do that with any layer, layer, even if it wasn't an action from Loomis. But we can also come back and modify specific areas. So you can see that if I paint, I can actually paint in and take out some of this noise in here and just clean this up because there's some artifacting and stuff going on and I could come back and do a little more on this if I wanted to but what I might actually do is some specific painting in here some some little manual detail work just to kind of paint over and smooth that out okay 
Let's look a little bit at the sky. Let's go ahead and refresh our map. We have control over each layer every step of the way. Okay, so I'm looking at my mask and I see that I have a little bit in those highlights. I want to actually take and do a little bit of the recovery of the zone 9 and 10. So I'm just going to select 9 and 10. I'm going to feather those out. I'm going to use the feather 50 just to soften those edges just a little bit. And uh, let's go ahead and hide my map because I don't need to see it right now. So we're not really badly clipping or anything, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is use the darken curve right here. And you can see, again, that it just masked it to the areas I want. And it brings back a little of the richness and blues. Didn't have to do any masking, just selected the zones I wanted, and I'm off and running. Okay, let's look at uh, a few other things. Let's take a look at what we've done so far. And we kind of started right up in here, and we're already down into here. So we're really cleaning this up. And, and this is one of those images that look pretty good, right, out of the raw file, but we can do, we can do more. Let's go down and take uh, the highlight areas now. Let me show my map again. Let's go ahead and take uh, kind of the zone, the zone 7, 8, 9, and 10, right? So we're going to go uh, right about to here, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and we'll take all of that selection. We'll go ahead and feather that, get my map out of the way. By the way, the map will actually hide automatically when you run the action, so you can see the result. I just kind of like getting it out of the way and just looking at that organic selection sometimes. Okay, let's try something. Uh, let's try something new here, like the the sun paint. Let's do a sun paint, and that's going to bring just a little bit more into this. Now, this looks pretty good, but let me show you how I could change this if I wanted to. Let's say I ran this gold, the sun gold overlay here, and I'm like, eh, it's fine, but I want something a little different. I could delete it and start over. I could also delete mask and restore selection. What that's going to do is it's going to delete the mask of this effect and restore that selection. I'm actually going to turn off the gold overlay for now. Okay, so I'm back to my selection here. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and run another action. So I'm going to run the fire paint overlay. Okay, and now I applied it to that same thing and I got this, which kind of fits in more with the fiery theme of that sky. I could, of course, use both. You can see if I turn on gold overlay now, because we ran the delete mask and restore selection, it now has no mask. It applies to everything. Now, I could I could remask it if I wanted to keep it, but I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. And you can see that I have the gold overlay on top here, limited just to those areas. Now, let's go ahead and take this a little bit further. Again, I'm going to show the map. And let's kind of work a little bit with these uh, zones, kind of threes and fours and fives and sixes, the other part of the sky. So we kind of have the bright part of the sky and then the shadowy, shadowy part of the sky. So let's take those fours, fives, and sixes and uh, maybe, maybe add some threes in there too to bring all that in. Okay, let's feather 50. Now we can see it's affecting down here in the trees just a little bit, but not a lot. Let's uh, let's do the glow haze lilac and just see what it does to that sky. And now we're kind of bringing this crazy purple, right? This intense color. I'm going to dial this way back. I don't want it to be too much. I just want a little bit of it in there. And it's barely affecting the greens down here at all. And let's just kind of go down and, and keep working with this. Another thing we could do is we could take, if we wanted more motion in that sky, so we could take and run uh, all of those higher ranges, say 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, okay? Feather, we could go down here and apply something like, like the motion paint, okay? And this would actually run and give us even a little more motion in those clouds. Do we need that? Personally, I don't think so, but there's certain areas, if we wanted that blur, that that would actually work really well. I'm just going to delete that group, and we're going to continue moving on here. Let's apply something in the total sense. So everything's looking good. I'm going to snapshot this where we're at, and uh, let's just try a couple different actions to see what they do. Color Mystic, eh, that's kind of intense. I'm going to undo that. Here's what I'm getting at as we do these, though. We can run these different effects, right? And then we could say, hey, I like this or I don't like this. And at that point, we could apply it. We could limit it to 
whatever we wanted. So if I'm playing with actions here, I don't have to make a selection first. I can run those actions globally to see what it is I'm wanting to look like. And then if I want to come back, I can limit those to whatever I want. So for example, I could run the new blue cross process and I could be like, oh, that's interesting. Why don't I put that only in the deep shadows, right? So I'm gonna put that in zone one and I'm gonna feather it by 25. And what this is gonna do is kind of model it throughout those shadows. So um, it's covering everything right now, but I've applied that. I'm just gonna come down here and I'm gonna go mask layer to selection. It's gonna take my current selection and apply that mask. Now, this is, is way too much. I'm gonna, of course, dial this way back and just put a little tiny bit of cross color into those trees to make it a little more interesting, okay? So you have all this control right there. There's a lot that can be done in the color Luma and we could use this for portraits. We can use this for landscapes. This video doesn't need to be very long because a lot of these effects are very similar. They give you the ability to do uh, shading and paint overlays and, and kind of light glows and things like that. And then to easily use the other tools in the simple toolbox and of course the tone select tools to limit and control those so you can get exactly the look that you want. We could continue working here by doing some tone control, right? By getting in and talking about, hey, let's let's take the the zone fours, right? And let's just lighten those zone fours up a little bit. And let's do the same with the zone threes, okay? So I'm gonna feather those. And then we're going to go down here. And this is getting a little bit into simple toolbox stuff, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. But we'll just run that lighten curve. And look at how we're balancing that sky out now, bringing more dynamic range into the scene and actually having a profound effect on that. So don't forget the, the tone tools, the way you can manipulate those with the simple toolbox. And absolutely watch part one of, of this series if you want to see the hands-on with the simple toolbox and what we can do with that. And also don't forget what we covered today. Get into those Luma painters. And one of my favorite ways is just to apply them globally and kind of see if I like the overall effect and then say, okay, I like that. Let's apply it only to these zone values to get the look we want. And at any time as I'm going along, I can just quickly refresh that total map, kind of see where I'm looking with everything and uh, put everything right where I want it. Let's finish this one up by selecting zone 10 and uh, we're just going to feather that a little bit and do a little bit of darken curve just to bring back one final bit of dynamic range into those highlights and refresh that map one more time and uh, have reduced, reduced those reds. There's still a little bit in the zone 10, uh, but it's not clipping into that pure white, so we haven't actually lost that into pure clipping. And in this case, I don't think we need to get too carried away because the image, frankly, looks really good. We could tinker with it some more, but I think we have what we're looking for. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, this, this second part of really digging deep into Loomist and getting hands on with uh, the Luma painters. And uh, we will we'll keep doing more of these and dig even deeper next time. The power of Loomist is absolutely enormous because we have all that control with the tone select, the zones, and everything that makes Loomist so amazing. All right, guys. Peace.